So uh, we are starting our second uh, showcase okay, uh, uh, panel. Okay, this is a format that the creative uh, the, the uh, platform co-op uh, conference has always been using. So these are, okay, again, let me reiterate, this is not a usual academic conference. Okay, this is really, the stage is here uh, to be occupied by practitioners. So we have in this panel practitioners from across Asia and also from uh, uh, international organizations. Okay, so if you look at our program, uh, our first speaker, Simo, she wants to join us. She's based in Geneva, the uh, International Labor or, uh, Organization. She's in charge of ILO's uh, uh, global co-op, okay? But then she cannot, she's originally from Turkey. Okay, this afternoon we have another Turkish uh, speaker, okay? So, uh, but then uh, she is speaking in the capacity of ILO, okay, uh, co-op uh, coordinator for co-op movement globally. And then we will, uh, as, uh, as, uh, uh, as I uh, said this morning, each uh, uh, sharing will be 10 to 15 minutes. Right? So it will be one by one and we'll go from Turkey to India to uh, 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 Southeast Asia to East Asia and uh, Japan, okay? And uh, uh, so it will be, uh, I encourage everyone to go online. So we have a, a web page, okay, platform.coop, okay, uh, slash 2018. There you can see all the names, you, you can see all the programs interactively in, in addition to the uh, printout you have in your hands. Okay, so you can go online and you can find all the, all the bios of the speakers in this uh, showcase session as well as uh, for the rest of the conference. All right, so without further ado, so the time is uh, Simos and, and she'll be speaking to us from the video. Greetings from the International Labour Office to the participants of the Sowing the Seeds platform co Greetings from the International Labour Office to the participants of the Sowing the Seeds platform cooperativism for Asia conference in Hong Kong. I would like to start by commending the organizers for bringing workers' rights issues to the forefront in this conference. I also appreciate the sowing seeds metaphor used as the theme of this conference. In this video message, I want to highlight how seeds of platform cooperatives need decent work standards, like they need clean air to help them grow into healthy, robust plants. We need to create an enabling environment for these new seeds so they have enough sun and water to grow, namely conducive laws and supportive institutions. New regulation that provides the legal support for startup and growth of new types of cooperatives needs to be developed and adopted with an eye for protection of the rights of workers, members, and users of cooperatives. The laws are often running behind on emerging cooperatives like platform cooperatives, and we need a whole new crop of legal experts who understand cooperatives and the digital economy. It would also be important that these legal experts are conversant in international labor standards. In this regard, we may need to think of some cross-pollination to produce a hybrid of legal resource people who can navigate the platform cooperative realm from a decent work perspective. I would think it could start by bringing some labor lawyers working on future work issues and gig economy worker rights together with legal experts specialized in cooperative laws. Following the principles of open access and creative commons, a database of new laws that are conducive to the growth of platform cooperism around the world would not just help those in Asia, but also in other parts of the world where such seeds need to be sown, like Africa, Latin America, and Arab states. Government institutions that provide support for growth of new types of cooperatives and new approaches to cooperatives are needed to protect this, these seeds and improve their resilience in the face of adverse conditions. Incubators in relevant departments in universities that recognize the social and institutional innovation involved in platform cooperativism would be needed. In addition, community organization with inputs from those that are literate in navigating the digital economy would be welcome options. Collaborations and solidarity are important and we need to know who's who when it comes to growing the seeds. 
who are the farmers and the gardeners, and who are the bees and other pollinators. Principle 6 on cooperation between cooperatives needs to be activated for knowledge transfer from the older and well-established to the newer cooperatives. Financing is a necessary fertilizer for platform cooperatives to grow. New finance mechanisms are emerging and expected to continue to emerge in response to the need for increased access to finance and financial services among cooperatives and other social and solidarity economy enterprises and organizations. We may opt for these new funding mechanisms either because of the lack of traditional funding opportunities or because we prefer to be connected to alternative funding mechanisms. In that sense, we can think of alternative financing as organic fertilizer. Examples of these mechanisms, which are based on collective self-organization and cooperative principles, include ethical banks, community development banks, solidarity microfinance, complementary currencies, community-based savings schemes, participatory budgeting, crowdfunding, cryptocurrencies, and social impact bonds, among others. These new financing mechanisms may not all be readily available for use by startup co-ops due to regulatory barriers or unreliability of the funding sources. We need to train ourselves on how these new funding schemes work so we are informed farmers who use the right kind and right amount of organic fertilizer for our seeds to grow. We also need to be cognizant of the diversity in type of platform cooperative seeds that are out there but also in the local and national environments that they grow in. We need to keep in mind that Asia is one of the most diverse regions of the world, so avoiding a one-size-fits-all approach would be good. At Dialo, we are interested in platform cooperativism in the service of addressing the changes facing the world of work today. How do cooperatives in general, and platform cooperatives in particular, respond to these cha challenges? What kind of seeds do we need to respond to these changes that are transforming the world of work, like climate change, growing inequalities, technological changes, aging populations, migration, refugees, and casualization of work? In urban areas, cooperatives exist in waste management, particularly among waste pickers, who provide much-needed services for improved waste management and recycling but also integrate their members into waste management systems and improve their access to occupational safety and health, training and financial services. How can platform cooperativism help advance these workers' rights, negotiation power and improve their representation and voice in such contexts? There are good practices we can learn from. Groups of informal economy workers like taxi drivers, home care workers, and domestic workers have been devising online applications to eliminate the intermediaries in the platform economy to share risks and benefits, strengthen representation, and increase negotiation power for better contracts. Gig economy workers are forming their own cooperatives in response uh, to overcome the precariousness that's typical of their jobs. And of course, not all seeds will make it into plants. There are valuable lessons to be learned from those that do not make it as well. We also learn a great deal from individual case studies on platform cooperatives. At the ILO, we would welcome research comparing outcomes between cooperative and non-cooperative forms of organization in the platform economy, relationship of platform cooperatives with trade unions, and the emerging alliances for social dialogue in the platform economy. In our research, we have found many cooperatives that provide childcare, elderly care, mental health care, and other care services. In a global mapping of care provision through cooperatives, we found that they encourage beneficiaries to actively participate in care plans that address physical, mental, and social needs in a holistic manner. These cooperatives also provide better and fairer wages and benefits to their workers, especially when those workers are members of the cooperative. In these cooperatives, women comprise most of the workers and members. How could the cross-fertilization of these initiatives with platform cooperatives help them grow. In the light of the aging populations in parts of Asia, especially in East Asia, such growth is needed. 
Could these care cooperatives engage migrants and refugee populations in the provision of care? For migrant workers, there are cooperative options providing low barrier entry to formal jobs, entrepreneurship, and access to social protection in host countries. So far, there are individual cases and country-level experiences on how social cooperatives in host countries work with local governments and international organizations to serve migrants and refugees. These cooperatives provide a range of services like language training, housing, work placement, and other services for integrating refugees. Construction cooperatives have hired refugees and migrants. Housing cooperatives have made room available for refugees. There are also instances of cooperatives of refugees being established in refugee camps with assistance from aid organizations in generating jobs and income. Refugee, refugees have also become members of host country cooperatives and have taken the knowledge and experience back to their countries of origin to rebuild their own communities. What kind of innovations can platform cooperatives bring into these experiences to help improve the resilience of refugee populations? In overcoming obstacles to women's labor market integration and providing opportunities for improved livelihoods, cooperatives can also have a positive impact. We have seen the emergence of women-only cooperatives in a number of countries to help overcome social and cultural barriers. Women-only cooperatives also emerge in sectors where women are the main producers in terms of the gender division of labor, like home-based workers. What are ways platform co cooperatives can collaborate with such initiatives? I know presentations in this session will provide some answers to these questions. At the ILO, we welcome the opportunity to collaborate with you all. We congratulate you on the upcoming launch of the Platform Cooperativism Consortium of Hong Kong, and we wish you a fruitful and dynamic two days of exchanges. Thank you. No video, you know. I <laughs> I was trying to make some video last week, and I couldn't look into the camera like her. Okay, she's she's really good and well uh, scripted. So thanks, uh, 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 Samuel Essen. Okay, uh, maybe she's watching us on online now. Thank you so much for such a fantastic uh, beginning for this afternoon. The show showcases uh, about changing landscapes of cooperativism in Asia.